Hey, what is up everybody? This is Steve Breach coming to you here today, driving home from a long day of work. Honestly, it was a little bit hard uh, to wake up this morning because I stayed up pretty late last night. Um, I was lucky enough to go to a early screening. I'm not sure if it was like an early premiere or um, what it was, uh, but I went and saw The Iron Claw, um, the new wrestling movie uh, starring Zach e Zac Efron. Um, that, uh, you know, uh, carnalizes the uh, Von Erich family. Um, I honestly um, really like uh, World Class Championship Wrestling. I really like the story of the Von Erich's family. Um, I pretty much found out about it um, because it happened before my time of getting into wrestling. I didn't have like a satellite dish um, or anything like that as a kid. Um, I can remember watching WWF um, fairly early in my life. I can remember um, not like setting a time for it, but watching um, WCW uh, when I would wake up earlier than normal um, on uh, TBS, I believe, like on Saturday mornings um, or maybe it was on Sunday. I, I know I didn't really know the schedule of when it was on, so I wasn't like setting like my day around it. Um, I think honestly how I first found out about World Class Championship Wrestling was I was a WWF fan. I watched and Kerry Von Erich, the Texas Tornado, um, debuted um, in the WWF. I don't really remember them ever really calling him Kerry Von Erich. Um, I felt like they always called him Texas Tornado, but at that time, I guess I really didn't like you know, actual wrestling, um, you know, because the guys like Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect, and like that didn't really set my world on fire yet. Um, so Mr. Perfect, um, as a guy, as the Intercontinental Champion, always kind of bugged me. I never really liked his character. That was his job. As a kid, I was just mad that the bad guy had the belt. And all of a sudden, one day... Texas Tornado showed up and they're saying he beat Mr. Perfect. I don't know if it happened on a prime time, on a house show. Um, it didn't really happen on a, a tape that I saw on VHS. Just all of a sudden, one day on Superstars, they got an update and there's Sidney and Gene Oakland is saying we got a new champion. He kind of stuck with my mind and all of a sudden, one day, he kind of just disappeared. Um, probably through watching like, those shows that came on at the time, like A Current Affair or... Um, I can't remember the other one that used to come on like that. It was like before the days of like Extra and Access Hollywood when it was kind of like news reports um, in, in like a weird way where we're on TV. Um, uh, I found out that uh, Kerry Von Erich had uh, committed suicide, that he had died. He was no longer around. It was kind of like, wow. <laughs> like that kind of like, they stuck with me. Um, when I got into DVD collecting, um, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, you know, I, I started buying some here and there, and then all of a sudden one day, I was kind of like, wow, I got like a little bit of a wrestling collection. I've talked about that in, in the wrestling DVD videos before. So it was like, well, I was collecting a lot of uh, wrestling DVDs. I'm sorry, regular DVDs, like movies. And um, I was just like, oh, well, I should probably buy a whole bunch of wrestling ones. So it just looks like I have a bunch of them. Like I have a little library. And uh, one of the ones that I picked up was the uh, World Class Championship Wrestling um, documentary. And it kind of just sat there collecting dust. Like, I don't know if people had like DVD collections, but they were like trophies back in the day. And it was almost like the more you had, the bigger your collection, the like the more you knew about wrestling or something like that. I know like in the early days of YouTube with uh, wrestling, it was kind of like, you know, a gem and stuff like that. Like the bigger your collection, obviously you knew more about it, but it was like, you don't really have time to watch all of those. But one day I popped it in and the documentary was honestly very, very good. And uh, the story kind of like got told a little bit more to me. And then um, one of the days, I believe when I had like Netflix, but you got DVDs through the mail, um, I saw on the site that they had a Heroes of World Class Championship Wrestling. Uh, documentary so I ordered that and uh, got it in the mail and watched it and it was a little bit more of a rougher cut I'm not sure if uh, Carrie um, no not Carrie I apologize it would have been Kevin I'm not sure if Kevin was financially involved in it or somebody else was 
Um, but it was almost like told through the eyes of, of Kevin Von Erich and they brought like the announcer in and a bunch of the wrestlers, whoever they could get. It was kind of like an RF video shoot interview almost at the point where, but like, it was like a whole bunch of them clipped up and put together that told the story. And it was like, wow, they told the story a little bit more different than uh, WWE did, but um, they added a lot of things to it, like really showing how sad of a story um, this honestly was. Because if you watch it, I watched the uh, WWE one right before I actually went to the movie. Um, like, was there chronalizing, like, um, the baby, the boy, as they put it in the movie, the oldest brother who was uh, young at the time, how he died, uh, how he got electrified, electrocuted, and then he drowned uh, in a puddle. Um, they have, like, a happy music behind it, and then they also have Fritz, like, driving in a boat, and then they just have basically Kevin being like, yeah, he wanted to get the heck out of Buffalo, so they moved to uh, uh, Dallas. And it was like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, but, uh, you know, WWE DVDs at the time, their documentaries, they were kind of like finding their way. Did they want to be, you know, really exposing what goes on behind the thing? Is it a true documentary? Do they want to tell the stories their way? So maybe they were kind of scared. Like, hey, we really just like are killing kids out here. It's going to be a sad story. Um, that's where they kind of put that music uh, behind it. But, um... I went to the movie, I got lucky. Um, I Honestly, I wasn't invited or anything. It wasn't like, you know, wrestling YouTubers were brought there. It was nothing special. I just opened Instagram one morning, I believe last week, and there was an ad for the movie, and right underneath it, it said um, special um, early previews. And I clicked it, and it was, it was you had to buy your ticket, but I was like, hell yeah. Um, I was in, and that's how I got to see it, basically a week and a half early. Um, basically, it was really cool. We were the first people in there. Um, you know, like how there's like the back rows of seating? They were almost full. There were There was, you know, a gap here and there along the way of two guys not wanting to sit together. Um, but the front, like three, four rows, the ones that are right up against the screen, they were um, empty. Um, and... Uh, so I, I would say the place was about 60% full in the theater, but it was like a really big theater with a huge screen. And um, it felt like you were, you know, showing up to get to the matches. And some people were like wooing and things like that when they came in. So I think there's a chance you go early, like opening night, you could get a little bit of a wrestling crowd um, that is, is pumped to be there. I, I heard discussions of people being like, I wonder if people coming to see this you know, really know anything about the Von Eriks. And, you know, there were people talking about their favorite matches that they remembered. So it was a really good feel um, for um, the movie before before it came on. Um, there was a guy who came in right before it started who basically said he was there uh, writing an article. Um, I'm not sure if it was, like, for a college paper, local paper, um, Sacramento Bee, or, or what it was, uh, but he just wanted to know our thoughts of the movie on his way out, and he would be out there. Um, uh, I'll honestly tell you, like, when you sit there and you watch a documentary, whether it's done by WWE or almost anything else, you're, like, kind of sitting there and you're listening to people tell the story, um, and, and sometimes you can get lost in that a little bit. I think, honestly, watching the movie uh, play out without the actual actors showing what's going on, um, it, it, you soak it in a little bit more. Like, you're, like, trying to, like, figure out the dialogue and, and who the characters are. Um, you actually have, like, a face behind the story that somebody's talking about. I thought that was honestly um, really, really good. I think, for the most part, almost everything was, was really... Um, factual um, to the way that uh, I knew about it. Um, I will tell you that honestly, a lot of buzz was about MJ, MJF uh, being in the movie. Uh, he was listed as one of the first executive producers once the movie ended, so I don't really know how much he had to do with this movie um, behind the scenes, but I'll tell you the truth, I don't think you see MJF's face in the movie. You see him wrestling a match, uh, and then you kind of see during the match just his body, like his like from his like nipples down, pretty much. Um, so if you go in there thinking like you know MJF's gonna win an Oscar or anything like that, I, I would say honestly, Dolph Ziggler's brother, the Hollywood hunk, 
of AEW. He plays Gino Hernandez. Uh, he actually wrestles a match in the movie, and um, he, uh, he he's, he's honestly probably in it more. Um, Chavo Guerrero wrestles in the opening uh, match, where he pulls off being um, a guy from overseas and not being like a Mexican guy <laughs> at the time. Um, but um, you know, so those are the wrestlers that I that I recognized uh, in there. Um, the movie's sad. The movie's sad. That's I mean, <laughs> sad. Um, it's very, very good. I can tell you that honestly, Zach Efron did a really good job in it. Um, almost everybody really looked like who they were supposed to look like. Um, and the Von Erich's uh, brother, who gets a separated shoulder in the match, goes in for shouldery, uh, shoulder uh, surgery and gets uh, toxic shock syndrome. I honestly thought he played the part of coming out of a coma um, very, very good. Um, he was like kind of like spacey, like he was almost absent. Um, he was saying words, but it was almost like he couldn't uh, put the words together uh, into uh, making a sentence. And, um, shit, where the fuck are they going? Um, but, um, it, it, it was pretty good. Like, he was like, the, you know, the sparks are, are firing, but you can't, like, just get that, like, straight connection uh, into being there. And the wrestling press at the time were really just, it was almost like they didn't care what they, what, what he just went through. Um, and they were just like, hey, when are you coming back? And I'm sure the father was kind of like, you know, really pushing. He's got to get back in the ring because that's his cash cow at the time. Um, I, 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 as you know, um, they lost the the oldest brother um, really early. Um, then the one brother went overseas to Japan, and his his, his stomach blew up. Um, they had two suicides um, of of uh, the brothers, and only you know Kevin uh, is alive now. Uh, even the ending. Um, when he's, you know, basically saying he doesn't have any brothers anymore, um, is very sad. Um, the sons, uh, are pretty cool to be there. Uh, I don't know a lot about the sons. Of course, I remember them when they showed up in NXT, uh, for a tryout for a hot minute. I remember when they wrestled that TNA match <coughs> a while back. Um, it's, I think that was a, a, a bound for glory uh, in, in, in Texas. They set the world on fire and they never used them again. Um, they, they sold out that house and it was almost like the Von Erichs really did it. Um, you know, since then they've been wrestling for MLW. I can honestly tell you, I don't know how to watch MLW. Um, I used to listen to a lot of their podcasts back in the day, which I guess is going to be returning soon because they, they had a, like a surprise podcast drop hyping them coming back. Remember when people on YouTube used to have like a hype up video? Like they just didn't make a video for a while. They thought that they would need to film like a, an old school wrestling vig vignette of, 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 of them to get fired up. Like, oh, he's coming back. Just make the video, man. Just, just That's all you need to do. <laughs> but um, I honestly thought that the movie was really, really good. I, I, I was kind of like trying to stay away from like spoilers in the movie. I don't think you can really spoil anything in this movie uh, because of the fact it's you know an historical movie. Um, they don't really change really anything that happened. The only thing that kind of didn't really make sense to me, and maybe you just, I just don't understand a lot, is like Fritz believes like the the, the NWA committee um, is against him and won't let him have the championship, and he wants to have the championship to make his territory at the time like really bigger. I always thought that the committee was like the promoters from each different territory who came together and they voted on the champion and if he couldn't make one of his sons or one of his wrestlers to be a big deal he couldn't get the votes I don't think anybody was not voting for one of the Von Erics to be the champion because I, I, I don't know I think Harley Race and Ric Flair at that time were you know the fucking man and I don't think you can get any better than that. And the wrestler that played Ric Flair in this movie is the only negative thing I can honestly say about this movie. Horrible. They should have got the fucking Ric Flair from like Young Rock <laughs> to, to be this guy. And that was like a comical imitation of Ric Flair. This guy 
It was like he didn't even watch the wrestling promo that he was reciting. The Harley Race one, I'll give you this much, it didn't look 100% like him, but he got the voice down pretty good in the promo. I believed it. There was a good second because they're like filming his um, reflection in the NWA title, kind of. I honestly thought they were fucking playing a Harley Race promo. Uh, I thought that one was, was honestly um, really, really good. Um, I don't know how, I don't know who. I, I hope that they make more wrestling movies in the future. This one, honestly, is pretty good. Like I said, there's a WWE documentary. There's the um, uh, Vice um, Dark Side of the Ring. There's the Heroes of World Class. So the story is already out there and they decided to make a movie on it. I mean, Ric Flair is a big name, kind of uh, weird. Uh, I, I don't know if they can really touch him because of what happened with the dark side of the ring uh, about him throwing it around on the um, plane ride from hell. Uh, he got a lot of negative res uh, response about that, and even Tommy Dreamer did for trying to act like it kind of wasn't a big deal um, to wrestlers at the time that he was doing that. Um, uh, they were supposed to make the Hulk Hogan movie with uh, Thor um, from the Marvel movies. I is it Hems, Hems, Hemsworth, Helmsworth, something like that. I, I guess that never happened. Um, yeah, I guess that's dead in the water. Uh, it was a documentary, but uh, I guess the Vince one for Netflix is dead as well um, because of what came out about him. So I don't know. I mean, honestly. Uh, the Young Rock is dead on NBC. I I'd love to see wrestling on the other side. I mean, there's enough guys out there that care about it. Heels is dead, too. That was a damn good show. I'll tell you this much. I was going to make a video on it, and I just never really had time. What the hell were they going to do with Heels Season 3, with, with the way it ended? I understand people are probably still watching that, so um, I don't want to be the one that says what happened. But that ending to uh, season two was kind of like, where are we going? Uh, like, it's almost like they were asking for it to end, but at the same time, it's like, dude, if this got renewed, I wonder what they were going to do. But um, I don't know, guys. Just go out and see this freaking movie. Um, don't wait for it to stream on HBO Max. I think they have the deal with uh, A24 Studios who made the movie. Um, it, it'll be on there sooner than later, but if you go to the theaters and you see this movie, people will see... Um, that wrestling fans care about wrestling movies. And I think they'll be forced. It would have, like, everybody goes. And it creates, like, a boom. And then all of a sudden, like, instead of making, like, comic book movies, everybody's making a freaking wrestling movie. That's what I'm talking about. Um, hopefully it's out there. Um, you guys uh, get a chance to see it next Friday. Peace out, guys.